Yeah, what we're looking for is a very stable flight on a passenger uh, aircraft. What we do is slightly fold the wings upwards to give that upwards effect, and that's called a dihedral wing dihedral, effect. Dihedral effect. A P wings. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and the Harrier jump jet, for example, where we want an unstable aircraft because it can roll you fast. You worked on that as well. That's correct, you? yes, down yeah. in Farnborough. The wings are formed downwards in an anhedral effect. So if you look at fighter aircraft, you can see that. Yeah. OK. Like so that. mine, theoretically, should go the furthest. And mine and should do the rolling and spinning and all of that. OK. okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> so yours was spinning it's quite spinning, a bit. Yeah. Mine somehow nosedived. <laughs> so maybe with a secret paper clip in there. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Airbus is one of the biggest employers in Wales. Building wings keeps a workforce of over 6,000 busy. There are currently only a few completed A350s in service, but the pressure is on to supply 780 pairs of wings on order to customers such as Qatar Airways. But this factory has a long history of working against the clock. This is a bomber factory in Britain. The workers have arranged with their management and their joint production committee to build a bomber in the record time of 30 hours. This is Broughton back in 1943. Here, a team from the factory are attempting to set a world record to build a whole Wellington bomber aeroplane. You can get some idea now of the size of the bomber. It's almost 65 feet long. During the Second World War, while the men were fighting on the front line, women were clocking into factories all over Britain to help in the war effort. The progress they are making speaks for itself. For it's only 10 o'clock one hour from the starting time. Betty Weaver was one of the women trying to smash that world record. She was recruited to work here from the local co-op. She's 94 now. The first day I turned up, we had our, there was two of us together. We had our photograph taken to put on a pass. I was under the largest white boiler suit I've ever seen <laughs> in my life and a wooden box with tools in it. And I didn't know which one to use or which end to start. Mm -hmm. But I was thoroughly taught for about three weeks. Yeah. And uh, that was it. I was on my own. So here was this massive production line. And little Betty. A big Betty. <laughs> <laughs> so which job were you given then and the whole construction? What was your job on it? Well, it was the intercom inside the plane yeah. where the crew kept in touch with each other. Okay. Two ladies before me used to run the cable through the plane yeah. and there was a, a box of fed at each station yeah. so that the pilot could keep in touch with all his uh, real gunner, the, crew, the yeah. navigator, the wireless operator, second pilot yeah. and I connected the boxes up. And did that remain your job through yes, the war then? all the way through. So everybody specialised in one exactly. thing? Exactly. Because yeah. the wings and the fuselage were fabric, weren't they? Basically, yes. The, the, yeah. the cover of yes. them was fabric. Yeah. It was linen was it? that they stitched on. Yeah. And they had to do 12 stitches to an inch. And that's if there they... was one stitch missing, it had to be undone no. and redone. Yes. Yeah. And then it was doped yeah. over the top until it was like the skin of a drum, more or less. And it's hard. Yeah. yeah. And so the inspectors very, checked all Very right. strict. Yeah. Very well, strict. it had to be, didn't yeah, it? Exactly. No. Men's lives depending absolutely, on them. Absolutely, yeah. Betty and her fellow workers gave up their weekend to try to break that world record. Here comes the test pilot, Gerald Wenny, a really amazed man. He was planning to fly the bomber this afternoon. But so fast has this aircraft been completed that they got him out of bed to put the bomber through its paces. It was wartime propaganda at its very best, aimed to bolster spirits at home and put the wind up the enemy. So did they break the record? The record? Yes, they broke it, those workers. They said they'd build a bomber in their spare time in 30 hours. Its wheels lifted from the ground 
in exactly 24 hours and 48 minutes. Well, I wonder if that thing got off the ground. I'll never know. I really don't. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. Broughton has a long history of producing aeroplanes. In 1949, the Hornet took to the skies after de Havilland took over the site. The Heron was built in the 1950s, and the Beaver and the Chipmunk were also built in Broughton. Some aircraft became flying legends, like the Mosquito and the Comet Mark IV. This sleek silver plane was the fastest airliner of its day to cross the Atlantic. Now then, this is the most modern production area of yeah. wings. Yeah. So, uh, and I couldn't let Betty leave without a glimpse of the latest wings. And look at all of this here. Just go yeah. to this barrier. Yeah. You're right. Yes. Yeah. It's wonderful. That is one big piece of material. It's not put together in any way. It's just made like one piece. And that is the bottom of a wing there. That's as big as a Wellington bomber would have been on it. Is. It is, yeah. Gee. But there's no one stitching fabric in here. But... <laughs> Thank goodness. Oh, good job. Unbelievable. I can't help but be astonished by Betty's story. You can imagine all of those young girls and men learning these incredible new skills in this you know, strange place, building bomber aircraft at a ridiculous rate. Quite incredible, but, you know, we should all be thankful that they did do it. Our Welsh wing is beginning to take shape. With the top skin fixed on, it's time for the next phase of work to take place. And how things have changed from when I started out as an engineer. As a woman, I was a rare sight in a male-dominated world. But here at Broughton, I've seen more women engineers at work than ever before. One of them is Bridie Welsh, and she's the expert when it comes to the skeleton of the wing. Underneath, what you've got here is your spar. Here. made of carbon fibre. And this goes the whole length of the wing? The whole length of the wing. Yeah, to provide and stability. Exactly. Um, and then we've got our ribs in between. Yeah. So what's interesting about these is they're made from aluminium instead of carbon fibre because the loads, uh, the forces are quite complicated. Bridie and her team designed the complex internal structure of the wing. That's because these wings do more than just lift the plane off the ground. They're also the fuel tanks for the aircraft. The fuel tank starts right at the centre yep. uh, and moves out to around about rib 28. And how much fuel did the wings take? It's just under 100,000 litres. Is it really? Yeah. It's massive, isn't it? <laughs> it's a lot of fuel. Yeah. And when the bottom is on, the fuel is actually touching up is, against yeah. this, isn't it? Against this aluminium. So how does that operate? Do you have fuel pumps that take it through? What we have is baffles, they're um, holes within the ribs which allow the fuel to move throughout the rib base. Without it just being one great big slosh, yes. I suppose. Yeah. Right? So, you know, when you go out on the town, do you go into Chester? I do. OK. Um, and, <laughs> and the lads chatting you up, beautiful young girl, and they're going, what do you do? And you say, I'm an engineer, what do they say? They do get a bit of a shock, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> Older commercial aircraft have up to eight fuel tanks. The A350 only has three. One tank is under the main body of the aircraft, while the other two are in the wings. Between them, they hold enough fuel to fly from London to New York and back again. Oh. <sighs> Just coming up through an inspection hatch. I'm inside the wing now, the, the big end, if you like, of the fuel tank. Lots and lots of ribs uh, going, stretching a long way in that direction. You know, it's remarkable to think that this will be sealed and the fuel inside here will go through the pumps and so on into the engine and no one will ever come into here again. So many people working on this. Hello! Hello. <laughs> Our wing is nearly complete, but
but first it needs a good clean. It's transported to this huge hangar where they look for the tiniest bit of debris that may have been left behind during its manufacturing. I'm meeting local woman Beth Pickering, who's one of the youngest managers on the site. So Beth, there are these FOD signs everywhere, foreign object debris, so none of yeah. it's allowed through so. there. Nothing is allowed into there that isn't already accounted for on our sheets. So I'm going to have to ask you to empty your pockets of any personal belongings, okay. keys, Phew. phones, <laughs> and put them all into this locker here. So okay. anything that we don't need. So anyone's need... working in this area, they've got to get rid of yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So anything that we don't need on the aircraft, we decant into what we call our FOD lockers. Yeah. Um, any tooling that is needed, we account for on the sheet, so it's signed in and it's signed back out, and this ensures the security. Brilliant. Of the okay, am I allowed to go in? Like yes. So now we can walk into the FOD area. So if I just pass you this way, right. So what we're going to do is just clean an area to make sure that the cleanliness. Okay. So, that, so, if I, so if I wanted to clean under here, I can't actually see that. So Yeah, so this is why we use a mirror, just to make sure that we can get a continued look around yeah, all of the products so you can see every it, single Yeah, I know. It's not like being at area. home, is it? Because you can't sort of, you know, you're quite restricted in how you can move. It is. So the mirror is really important to make sure that we don't miss any part of this bay yeah. when we're doing an inspection so you can see every angle. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can see it's picking up. So, how small? Because I've got quite a bit there already. How small an object um, would you be looking for? So we're looking for the tiniest of fibres. So when we're doing this clean and this inspection, we're looking for any of the residue from the manufacturing processes. Yeah. We were also doing trials and tests with our suppliers to get our wipes to be as low linting as possible. So, so they don't leave fibres. So even either, the wipes either. that you're cleaning with wow. don't leave fibres. What do you like when you clean your house? <laughs> it's spotless, it's to the same <laughs> standard. Right now, sir. <laughs> it's ingrained in you when you've been on the shop floor. Yeah. So, after several months in production, the 32-metre wing sits on the factory floor. Tomorrow morning, it will leave Wales and head towards the south of France. It's the end of shift. And I've heard from my new buddies there's a celebration around the corner in the social club. From the bygone days of Vickers Armstrong to Haviland and British Aerospace, veterans and ex-workers are getting together to celebrate 75 years of aircraft production at Broughton. I've been invited along and there's no mistaking the pride still felt by the people here tonight. Everyone, in their own way, Loved working here. We were sheep net workers, and it was, we were like a big family. Honestly, it was, it was like a big family. I worked in the plan room, giving all the drawings out to the men when they came. Members of your family have worked here, haven't you? Oh yes, my sister, my brother-in-law, my late husband, my son, myself, my daughter-in-law, the whole family. Everybody. I've been admiring all these black and white photographs that I are know, around. which are mine. Which are yours, I know. 30 years I was in charge. Were here, you? Of, the, of, it's a, of an archive, was it? So, uh, yeah. it's all out. I didn't realise you were a North Wales girl. I'm a North Wales French girl. girl. Born and bred. And old Betty's having a lovely time as well. 